I'm Dean, so for my wife, I live in a tiny house. We've got a great Dean, about to have a baby as well in yeah. seven weeks. The way that we want to raise our child is in the, the village concept of what we've lived in thousands of tens of thousands of years and has changed more recently to, you know, everyone's got their picket fence. The first thing we did was knock down this back fence when we, we bought this side and our friends bought that side. It was a really symbolic thing that was like, we're neighbors and we want to live in community. Lockdown was obviously very hard for everyone. It was very different for us because we live with, there's essentially four dwellings, four families. I've got my, my two brothers over here and, uh, and two couples on, in each of these places that we've been with for a long time who have really invested in this community mm -hmm. for social justice mm -hmm. reasons, being around the right people, having a, a growth mindset and giving us space to do that, to figure out what we believe, how we'd want to live as well as a couple. We talked heaps about our values and the commitments we wanted to make to each other, to our community. Out of that, you, you start doing things like building a tiny house. <laughs> we want to raise our kid in that kind of setup. We sort of set our mind on something, aligned really strongly with our values and with Project C, trying to you know do something new and innovative is you know, what we do. What is Project C? Well, Project C is an example of an alternative education that encourages creativity and integration of different schools of thought or that there were no, there's no access in this community to any after school stuff around the arts for all primary and, and okay. high school. Yep. Yeah, unless you paid for it or, yep. or you go outside of this community. What we do at Project C is use creativity to tell a story and allow young people to, to create, essentially, as a, as a form of engagement mm -hmm. and a skill for life. The school is so com compartmentalized. There's not many spaces within the school context where you combine those things. There are certain requirements that teachers have to meet. And, and if you talk to a teacher, they'll say like, yes, I, like, I want to do more of this stuff, but I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, and I have to meet a certain level of academic outcome um, that my school is trying to meet because there, are, there is a, a bit of a competitive side in terms of getting results within schools as well. So, um, and which leads to young people that are underperforming or not showing up to school. Well, young people, are, and I've seen this countless times, if they're not performing or going to school, they'll be asked to leave, yes, to sure. move on. Yeah. Often they don't have the, they might not have food at home on the table or they've got the wrong foods. That's like the, the access to healthy food options. There's very, very minimal fresh produce, which is, is a bit more expensive. If someone's not getting food on the table at home, then how do you think they're gonna function at a school environment? Stuff that you're selling at the canteen, if you're selling fried and cans of Cokes, you're really not helping the teachers to try and get no. good outcomes for those young. They're gonna say, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I don't, I'm hungry or like, you know, there might be, it might not come out in that way, but you know, it might come out in misbehavior or whatever it is. And so often we react to those behaviors and we can't see the, that bigger picture. We just, we can see through the academic lens only. Yeah, and, okay. and we don't see that there are so many barriers that are in front of this young person that yeah. are stopping them from engaging. We're doing something that's not engaging those people. And so we need a resource those programs or organizations in those things that are actually doing it already uh, would be and, and all the research shows that using creativity and using the arts leads to better academic outcomes and the arts and and creativity it's about healthy life and holistic life it's about having a broader mindset than i need to be good at mathematics because that serves a purpose, but it doesn't prepare you for all the things that the workplace and life requires of you because it's just not, life is not compartmentalized. Coming out of school, like, I, like no one really knows what the heck they're doing. No. And I learned so much in that first year, like first few years. I, I spent six months on the couch because I was like, what, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Businesses want people who are able to be innovative and creative and you're expected to hit the ground running. People in the workplace are understanding mm -hmm. in, in a new role and that kind of stuff. But um, I had no idea that when I started at uh, so my first council, my first job, most people don't really know what, what their next move is and, and that's okay. And, and career is an okay concept, but passion or value that drives whatever your output is a way better understanding of what your work life could look like. I had no idea, but I knew I liked working with people. So, I mean, it took me a while to get there, but it's essentially a self-development 
trying a year, figure out what you believe, um, visit different communities, religious or otherwise, and learn from them and from the community that we're in. It was a rite of passage. The first half is unpacking your, your identity, pulling all that apart, trying to figure out um, what you believe. I developed a great community through the people in around yeah. in my life. talked a lot about belonging and safety in the learning context. Why do you think that's such an important thing uh, when it comes to enabling a child to learn or anyone to yeah. learn? Yeah, really basic standpoint, yeah. the way I understand it is that it's, it's essentially the amount of supportive adults that are in a young person's life. Well, when I was a, a teenager, we, um, we had some family struggles, um, so parents divorced around, I think I was 15. I'm the second eldest of seven and the eldest, my eldest brother and I took on a lot of responsibility, especially for the three younger siblings because we're very young. And that really developed our sense of family and that people can rely on and supporting people in, in need. I was still doing the teenage stuff, pushing boundaries like partying and drinking when I was 15, 14, but you know, there's tumultuous yeah. times. I didn't have supportive adults. Out of that tumultuous time, when I was 19, I turned back to this community that had been a huge support for me and is still a huge support for me now. Everyone around me has a, a growth mindset as well. So yeah. being willing to try new things because it encourages growth in myself is, is a huge, huge reason for why I'm doing what I'm doing now. There's basically a direct correlation between the number of supportive adults in your life and po positive outcomes throughout yeah, right, your youth. Okay. So, um, and they recommend like five supportive adults okay. in your life to one to one young person. Um, that's sort of a minimum sweet spot. Um, so the more we can uh, equip young people with that kind of social capital, um, the more likely there's going to be good outcomes. So that might look like more access to mentoring programs like what we do. The framework that we use, we call it a creator space framework because it's it's a mentoring, a group mentoring program. It's group learning, it's collaborative, it's it's guided by an artist, a professional artist who facilitate a group in a way that allows young people to create and contribute to that creativity. So it's not just a, this is how you do a line or this, you, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, um, or how, how you paint appropriately. They also are encouraged to create their own dance moves or, okay. you know, their own drama and tell the stories that they um, want to tell and aren't able to tell from their communities. Spaces of belonging are uh, obviously a huge component of, of what we do. And you can find that in, in sporting clubs, in yeah. church youth groups or youth programs and places that, that connect and adding social capital to the lives of young people. Yeah, so if those spaces are available for young people, then they're less likely to engage in unhealthy risk taking yeah. behaviors. Dealing with kids and young people is about values and about um, empathy. That drives everything. My, uh, people's values, whether you're aware of it or not, is driving what you do. But I'd rather be the, mm. the fence at the top of the cliff than the ambulance at the bottom. People need support, but yeah, yeah. unless you're doing that fence, then, then nothing's gonna change. Project yeah, the primary things that we are looking for are engagement. What are their attitudes towards school mm -hmm. in terms of mental health and mm -hmm. overall well-being? They're, those are the main sort of things that we are trying to, to gauge. Overall, the, the engagement levels and satisfaction with school increased over the time that we delivered that program. We're going to schools and saying who would yeah, be okay. appropriate for this. The schools obviously are aware of the type of programs that we're delivering and then young people get to choose as well what they're engaging with. So yeah, okay. they're not just being thrown into a dance program or anything like that. Yeah. We make sure that we're doing things in terms of best practice, firstly, so that we're delivering in, in a good model. And then secondly, that we're actually meeting um, the goals that we want to meet. And if we're not meeting those, then we make adjustments. It's not about having no data or no science behind it, because there it is. And the social sciences are an amazing field for seeing things from a systemic viewpoint rather than just what's in front of me and yeah. not seeing that and so what person is an issue or as the, the reason that they are 
wh where they are, but seeing the causes that have led to that. The underlying driver is like there's no access to the arts and that is a, a structural or systemic issue within this community that's keeping young people, um, yeah, well, keeping them, Hold, give, holding, holding them back. Yeah, yeah essentially. Um, so they don't have the same opportunities as other people. We need to just resource more after school or in school alternative pathways, basically. We need to just expand our our delivery models in, in the education system. There's so many organizations out there doing that kind of stuff and trying to provide that capital to to young people and supporting family systems as well to, to provide that for young people themselves. It's, it's, that's really important. It's what we've had for the entirety of, of human existence is, is social capital hasn't had to be defined because it's what we've had. And now we've had to define it because isolation and loneliness is is skyrocketing in our culture. It leads directly to healthier people, to more supported communities and to more opportunities as well because you, you're more connected. If mum and dad are struggling, you know, the community steps up steps up and supports and, and that just happens naturally. If I can paraphrase, Dean, it sounds to me like you've achieved the outcome and, and the skill, but that's not the be all and end all. No. That, that, that's not the driving motivation. Yeah. The driving motivation is more of a consideration of okay, what's 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 motivating me? Yeah. What's um, what am I about, and how yeah. might I express that in my own? Yeah, life? I love what I do. I I love my role, which is being on the ground, working with young people and hearing their stories, and creating spaces where they can advocate for themselves and have access to opportunities. And and my role at Project C, where hopefully we're creating a, a program and filling a need that wasn't there previously, and really hitting that systemic issue in this community and others where we can create long-term impact. The biggest piece of advice I could give to like an individual student or just a person in general would be do the hard yards of, of what you believe and why you believe it. It helps us all grow and, and share together. You're gonna to be in a role that you're passionate about that is driven by an inner energy and value system that you don't need to work for. If you're working from that place then Gotcha. You're, you're going to have a better life. Live authentically to who you are, but you can't do that if you don't know who you are and what you believe. So I, I feel like I live authentically to what my values are and um, I think I, I'm happier for it. Yeah. Love it. Uh,